what they said or what they talking about, but you bad. I'm talking about bad, bad. I mean bad, bad, bad. She, bro, come look at her. She pressure. I'm gonna be honest with you, little mama. Wait. What's up, YouTube? Your girl is back with another freaking video. If you are new to my channel, my name is Alicia Janae. Welcome to my channel. Hi. Say hi back, okay? You can drop it in the comments and say hi back. But anyway, welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy my content. If you stay all the way to the end, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you are not new here, then welcome back and thank you for watching. So today's video is going to be a mini Pretty Little Thing try on haul. I got some new pickups um, earlier this month and I'm just gonna, you know, try them on a camera or whatever. And also it's going to be 21 questions, a Q and A for y'all to get to know me more. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so the first item is this stone Pretty Little Thing bodysuit. It's just a real, it's a thin, soft material. I like the shirts that are this material. So it's a thin, soft material. It's just a stone bodysuit or whatever. And um, I got this in a UK size six, US size four. That's item number one. So this is the bodysuit, y'all. It's just a plain bodysuit. I like these kind, like I said, the thin material kind. Because I find that the thin material ones, they fit better and then they're more stretchy. So they fit, but they're stretchy. So they don't feel constricting. I hate the thick material ones because they feel constricting after a while. I don't know. But it's just this plain stone color bodysuit. Regular bodysuit. Next item is going to be this black slinky basic low rise mini skirt. I don't know what I was thinking getting a mini skirt, y'all. But yeah, I got a mini skirt and it's, it's mini, all right. So let's put this on. And I didn't buy this to go with this shirt or nothing like that. I'm just trying it on with the shirt. So this is the mini skirt. It's real mini, like it literally stops under my butt cheek, y'all. Literally. So y'all, I did not know that this skirt was see-through, but the skirt is definitely see-through. But, yep. All right, y'all. So the next thing was this black newspaper set. It's just pretty much a mini skirt, pretty much, yeah. A mini skirt and a corset kind of top. I think this one is really cute. This one is, this is probably going to be my favorite out of these few items that I did get. I just like this set. It's really cute. Yeah, I love this set. But yeah, this is just a black newspaper set. Skirt and shirt to match. And all of the items, um, I'm going to link all of the items in the description box below. So that if y'all want to shop them, you can. So the next item I got is this brown sweater dress. This is a real cute, real classy outfit. I got this in a size extra small this material is thick but it's stretchy so i like this material a lot the sleeves are made a little big at the top and then fitted at the bottom and then there's this little cross action going on here this real cute little cross detailing in the back as well this dress fits real cute Yeah, 
So with these clothes, I didn't get too many like extravagant pieces or, you know, flashy pieces. I just got some simple, real cute, um, thorough outfits or whatever. And I got two pair of heels. I'm going to show those as well. But yeah, so this dress was real cute and real classy. So the next item that I got is this pretty much, it's not mesh, it's knitted kind of mesh pink see-through dress. And it's real cute. Um, I'm not going to turn all the way around because I know that it's see-through and yes, I bought it on purpose. But I have on black undergarments so you can't see anything. But this is real cute. I'm not sure what color undergarments I will wear with these. I probably will wear these black undergarments with like a black boot or something like that. But it has the flare bell bottom sleeves, which I think is really cute. It fits really good. Yeah, I like this. I'm not sure, you know, like I said, what color undergarments I would wear with this. I don't know if I would put on nude, white, or black. Or if I would try to find like a pink and try to match the same color pink undergarments with a shoe or something. I don't know. But this is cute. But this is all that I bought as far as the clothing. I did buy two pair of shoes. So I'm going to try the shoes on with y'all see. Before I put these shoes on, let me tell y'all, my toes are not done. They are not done. They haven't been done in a minute. My feet are not ugly though, but my toes are not done. So don't talk about my toes. I'm letting y'all know that before I put them on this camera, okay? Okay, don't talk about my toes. All right, so the first heel that I have are these orange lace-up heels. These orange square toe thong style lace-up heels. And I think these are really cute. And as y'all know, if you watched my first try on haul that I got from Pretty Little, that I did with Pretty Little Thing, then you know that I got my shoes in my original shoe size at first, which is a size seven. I usually wear a size seven in heels. And I bought two pair of shoes from Pretty Little Thing, and they both were too big. So with these, I decided to take a chance and size down to a size six. And they fit perfectly, literally, they fit perfectly. So here's the next shoe, y'all, which is this brown square toe thong lace-up heel. They're almost just like the orange ones, except they have a little more detailing on them um, around the foot. These are really, really pretty. And these as well, I got them in a size six and they fit perfectly. So, in terms of pretty little thing when it comes to the shoes, I suggest you go down an entire size because, like I said, in my first haul, I bought two pair of shoes in my um in my regular size, which is a size seven, and they were both way too big. And this time, I got both of my shoes in a size six, and they fit perfectly. So yeah, I suggest going down a full size to get you a shoe that fits. So y'all, the last thing that I got from Pretty Little Thing were these crew socks. I didn't get these for any specific reason. I just like crew socks and I thought these were really cute. So I grabbed these as well. There's a white and a gray pair. Is this gray? Yeah, it's gray, but it kind of looks like a mint gray, if that makes sense. But, and of course they say Pretty Little Thing around the um top of them. So yeah, I just got these because I thought they were cute. But that is all for the try on portion of this video. Those are all the items that I got from Pretty Little Thing. Um, like I said before, all of the items will be linked down in the description box if anybody wants to shop along with the sizes that I got and everything. Um, so now let's get to the 21 questions Q&A portion of this video. All right, so I posted on Instagram and Facebook for y'all to give me some questions for this Q&A video. And I pretty much picked my, I picked 21 of my favorite questions to answer in the video. Because, you know, some of y'all don't be leaving no questions of substance. Y'all just be asking crazy stuff. But let's get right into these questions, y'all. Question number one. 
what made you really go for it in terms of YouTube? What made me really go for it? I pretty much have wanted to start YouTube since like 2016. And I've been just, I won't say procrastinating. I don't know the word. I just been putting it off. Like, you know, I wanted to be like, oh, I need to get a camera. I need to do this. I need to do that. Like just all these extra stuff that other people make you think you need before starting YouTube. And this year, I was just like, for my New Year resolution, 2023, I just want to start YouTube. Like, January 1st, I'm going to drop a YouTube video. So, that's just, that was my whole thing when it comes to YouTube. That was all. Um, I just said, forget it. Like, I don't need a camera. Like, the iPhone is a camera. Like, right now, I'm recording on my iPhone 14, literally. And it looks so good. If you ask me, it looks better than these $800 and $700, $1,000 cameras, in my opinion. But... That's all. I've just been wanting to do it for a long time. I already have the personality for it and the presence for it. So I finally just up and did it. It's nothing to it but to do it, honestly. If you want to start content creating, if you want to start your YouTube channel, just do it. You don't need a camera. If you got an iPhone, you got everything you need. Question number two. What's your favorite thing about life right now? My favorite thing about life right now is probably just being able to enjoy it. Like, I don't work at the moment. Um, so, my favorite thing is just being able to pick up and do things when I want to do things. Like, wake up when I want to wake up. Go out of town. Leave and come back whenever I want to because I don't have a job to answer to. I don't have anywhere to be. So, that's pretty much my favorite thing about life right now is being able to do what I want to with my own time on my own time. Question number three. Well, it's not really a question, but it says, describes tiny, describes. <laughs> it says, describe tiny, no modeling, no acting, just you. Tiny is my nickname for those who don't know. So if you hear tiny or T, those are just my nicknames. But so describe me with no acting, no modeling, just me. Honestly, I can't describe me without at least modeling, like, that's just me like my whole personality like I grew up watching America's Next Top Model on TV and everything like that which Tyra was a fool for that show by the way like they used to treat them girls bad but I grew up watching America's Next Top Model and all of that kind of stuff so it was just like it was always something I admired and always something I was like oh I want to do this I want to do that so when I got older like I won't say I really like just put it off or never really wanted to do it it was just a hey i don't know how to get into modeling um but then i finally did you know i figured out my way or whatever and it's just like it's just me like modeling is just me i get to like when you see me model you see my whole personality like same thing with dance like how dances are like you can you can describe and express yourself through actions, through dancing, through movements, which I used to be a dancer as well. And when I model, that's the way I feel. I feel like I can express my entire personality in front of a camera, literally. So that's, it's nothing that really just inspired me, inspired me. I've always wanted to be a model since I was a little girl. Question number four, what is your true dream career? You're literally amazing at everything you do. Thank you so much. And my true dream career is just, I want to, I don't have, honestly, I don't have a true dream career, like just one specific career. I want to do multiple things, but I also want to just have a laid back life. Like I want to make passive income. Um, and that's something that a lot of people like let go over their heads. Passive income is very um, underrated. I want to make passive income. I want to be rich by doing nothing one day. Literally, that is what I want to do. Or being rich off content creation. Like, if I can get rich off of this, then yeah, my life is set 100% for real. Uh, so I don't have a, a true dream career. I have changed, you know, dreams, fields, or goals. I've changed things multiple times over the years. And I'm only 20 years old. So I feel like that's okay to want to change things. Like, maybe like a year and a half ago, I used to want to be um, an NBA dancer. Um, I was going to try out for the Grizzlies and everything like that. Like, for the girls' girls. I, I, I've had a lot of things. I've tried doing lashes. I didn't have the patience for that. I've tried selling clothes. 
it just wasn't something that kept my interest. And I was making good money selling clothes, but like I said, it didn't keep my interest. So I just thought, why keep doing stuff that's not keeping me stimulated? Like, I, it was no use to keep on doing it. And I'm the type of person, if I get bored with something, I'm going to drop it. And that's just that. Question number five. What do you do for a living? As of right now, I don't do anything specific for a living. So I just enjoy life at the moment. All right. Question number six. What is one of your favorite accomplishments so far? I can definitely say... One of my favorite accomplishments so far, um, which was last year, a couple of months ago, working with Kevin Hart um, on his tour. It was so fun, y'all. When I say we literally got paid to be there and be pretty, like as models slash ambassadors for his um, tour, we literally got paid to be there, have fun, be pretty, and make sure other people have fun. That's all, like honestly. We got paid just to do that and to be around celebrities all dang on day. That's it. That's all. It was so fun. We did get to meet Kevin. Um, we didn't get to take any pictures with him, no, because as soon as we got around him, you know, they was on the whole no phone thing. So they took our phones and we got around Kevin or whatever. Um, and it was uh the day after he had to bury his dad. So, you know, we was trying to be a little respectful and a little a little laid back and not too fangirly. Because, you know, he just buried his dad yesterday. And he got up there and did that show like it wasn't nothing going on internally. Like, to see him flip the switch from backstage to on stage and then back off stage, it was so, like, surreal, y'all. Because it was like, dang, you just, he flips the switch like this. But he is still a goofy person. Like, he's naturally goofy. He's not just the comedian on stage. He's naturally goofy, like period um that was literally one of my favorite accomplishments getting booked for the Kevin Hart tour question number seven how did you grow your Instagram so fast from 4k to 10k plus in three months so y'all a lot of people ask me this question and when I tell y'all it's no secret sauce is none of that literally I had a reel that went viral let me go to it I had a reel that went viral and I had a video on TikTok that went viral as well on accident because I don't even be on TikTok and I don't even know how to work that app like that still. And I posted the video and I didn't expect this to go viral, but it went viral on TikTok. But I posted this reel on Instagram and I got 45K views on it. This one right here. Ooh. This reel right here. I'm be honest with I'm be honest with you, little mama. I don't know what they said or what they talking about, but you bad. I'm talking about bad, bad. I mean bad, bad, bad. She bro, come look at her. She press. I'm be honest with you, little mama. But yeah, that's said. the real I posted and it kind of went viral. I got 45k views on that. And then my birthday pictures, they went semi-viral too or whatever. Like before these pictures, I was only getting like, I would say between on an average, I would get like five to six hundred likes each post. On an average of five hundred likes of each on each post. But once I posted these pictures on my birthday, my birthday pictures like they went crazy on Instagram. Um, I got seven k likes on the, on those pictures, and then after that, like my following just blew up blew up blew up blew up blew up and then every picture after that i started getting like 1k likes 1.5k likes 2k likes like that's how my instagram blew up from 4k to 10k i promise y'all and then after that i just was posting back to back and my more followers start rolling in start rolling in and then i was like dang this social media thing might be kind of a little natural a little easy to me then um, which I already kind of knew that, but I really didn't take it serious until then. So then I was like, time to turn my followers into dollars. For real. Question number eight. How did you become so comfortable and confident with modeling? Modeling. Ugh. How did I become so comfortable and com confident with modeling? I can say I was already confident. Like, you have to already be confident before stepping in front of the camera in terms of modeling. 
You have to be confident before you step in that camera. Because if you're not confident, it's going to show. You can't step in the camera being insecure or feeling bad or anything like that. Because it's going to show on the camera lens. In 4K, it's going to show. So you have to already be confident with modeling. As far as getting comfortable in front of the camera, you have to do it repetitively. You have to get in front of the camera over and over and over and over again. And me personally, I'm always in a dang on camera. So... I kind of got real comfortable real fast, but as far as confident, I've always been confident. You have to be confident before getting in front of that camera. And number, what am I on? Nine? I lost count, but I think I'm on nine because I didn't number the questions. Where are you from? I am from Memphis, Tennessee. What that man said, um, the beautiful land in the world. He forgot to put most. He literally said the beautiful land in the world. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, the beautiful land in the world, y'all. How old are you? I am 20 years old. That was question 10. Question number 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I don't know. Maybe I'm off by one number because I thought I put 21 questions on here. Anyway. How did you survive school every day with being most hated for just being pretty and smart? Y'all, Maya asked me this question. Um, so the school she's referring to is Grandview. And I don't know how I survived that, to be honest. Like, people hated me at that school for no freaking reason. For number one, I don't mess with nobody. I'm naturally a quiet person around people that I don't know. So, I barely talk to anybody or anything like that. People literally hated me from the day I stepped foot in that school and still to this day right now, probably. I'm pretty sure. But, honestly, if it wasn't for you, Maya, and our money, if it wasn't for y'all two, I probably wouldn't have made it through it because... Y'all really clung to me like this, and it was literally just us three all the time. Like, before it was y'all two, it was just me, but once I met y'all and, you know, we got cool and everything, like, we got cool real fast, and y'all literally was down for me from day one. Um, Like, when them girls tried to fight me outside, when we was at gym, and everybody was literally in a circle. Like, we was at the top of the hill. And everybody else was at the bottom of the hill in a circle. And, like, I'm like, damn, what they talking about? Like, everybody over there. So, when I walk over there, I come and stand there and everybody be quiet. I said, y'all can finish y'all conversation. Like, what y'all talking about? <laughs> and one of the girls was like, um, you can, no, go, go and leave. Go back where you was at or whatever like that. And I'm like, what y'all talking about that y'all don't want me to hear? What y'all talking about me or something? Like, what's up? <laughs> But it was crazy. And that's only one story. Then seven girls tried to jump me um after school one day. Like it was just crazy. I, it was it was crazy. It was disgusting, honestly, because I ain't do nothing to none of these girls. They was mad at me because I was pretty and I wasn't intimidated by nobody. And they was also mad at me because half of they I don't want to say the N word because it might go against YouTube guideline policies or something. But half of them was mad because they dudes liked me. And they ain't try to hide it either. So, I, I honestly, I don't know why everybody was just hating on me from day one. Because I was a quiet little thing. And people tried to pick on me because I was so small. I was real short, real skinny or whatever. So, people tried to pick on me. And I stood my ground and let them know that I ain't going for none of it. None of it, period. At all. I might be little, I might be skinny, and I might be short. But ain't nobody going to pick on me. And I bet... I just bet you won't fight. Nobody fought me for real. So I never got touched a day of being there. Um, they tried to and came jumping tough with me and all this and all that. But nobody ever actually put their hands on me. So if it wasn't for you and our money, though, I probably wouldn't have made it through that because I wouldn't have had no friends. Like, y'all was my literal, literal only real friends there. Like, as far as real, real friends... Y'all was the only two um, in the same grade that I was in. So, y'all was the only two. So, without y'all two, ain't no telling how my years at Grandview would have went. But, all right, next question. 
Is it hard being a brand ambassador? Hmm. So I can say that it's definitely not hard being a brand ambassador. Um, you just have to stay on top of it. Like you have whatever the terms you agree to with whatever company to be their brand ambassador, you just have to stay on top of it. Like, for example, for um Kim's dollhouse hair um that I'm an ambassador for. Her terms were, you know, um, post three times a week on your social media platforms. It could be a story post. It could be a feed post, anything like that. Just post three times a week. And in exchange, you know, you get um, a certain amount of free wigs a year. And then you get discount on hair after that. And then you get free, like, supplies, hair supplies, um, lashes, um, clothes or whatever, like those were her terms with that. And like for pretty little thing, the, um, agreement is in exchange for the money voucher for the clothes, I just give them two story posts, um, a month and two in feed posts a month only on Instagram. So you just have to be able to stay up to par to be able to give them the content that they need in the time frames that they tell you they need it, especially if they are paying you or giving it to you for free. If they're paying you or giving it to you for free, make sure you're giving them the deliverables on time. Give them their deliverables on time. If you cannot do that, then you cannot be a brand ambassador. Next question. Will you start a vision board for your goals? I am going to start a vision board for my goals. I'm not sure if I want to do a digital one since I have an iPad or if I want to do an actual physical one, tangible one. I'm not sure which one I want to do. I might just do both. Um, no telling. I might just do both, honestly. But I am definitely going to do a vision board. Do you ever think babies will fit in your lifestyle? 100% babies i absolutely want kids i absolutely 100 percent want kids so kids are gonna fit in my lifestyle one way or another i'm gonna make them fit so i'm definitely gonna have kids there's no question about that whether or not they're gonna fit into my lifestyle i'm gonna make it happen and that's just that on that next question what's on your bucket list for this year on my bucket list for this year honestly the main thing is I want to go out of the country. I want to take a trip out of the country. I'm planning to go to Jamaica. Hopefully that still happens. Um, But that's on my bucket list for this year so far is taking a trip out of the country. That's the top thing on the bucket list anyway. Take Next question. What's your favorite thing about being a brand ambassador? I can say my favorite thing about being... Being a brand ambassador is being able to make connections. People underestimate connections. Connections are the most important thing in this life. Whether you're in college, not in college, um, whether you're a content creator, a business owner, like no matter what you do, like connections are the biggest thing in this world. Yeah. My favorite thing about being a brand ambassador is the connections, and that's just that. Next question, hardest battle you've faced? I honestly can say the hardest battle that I faced was having to stop playing sports. I had to stop playing sports because of a problem with my feet. Um, I have, like, an extra bone where my arch is supposed to be, and, like, if you know me, well, if you knew me back then, you know that sports was, like, everything to me. Like, I used to be a competitive gymnast. Um, I really think that's where the problem started at because um, that's when I started noticing problems with my feet when I was doing gymnastics. Uh, but I didn't want to make a career out of gymnastics, so, you know, I didn't take that to college or all the way or anything like that. Um, but after I quit gymnastics, uh, I played pretty much almost every sport in school. When I went back to public school, I played um softball i ran track for a minute but then i had to stop because of my feet um i had to stop in the middle or in the very beginning of track season like i didn't even make it to the first track meet because of my feet like i had to stop and then i played basketball 
I pretty much was just all over the place playing sports because my body was addicted to the adrenaline, honestly, because doing gymnastics, I was in the gym six days a week, sun up to sun down, basically, and my body was addicted to the adrenaline rush of playing sports, so I couldn't sit still. I had to do something. Like, I had to do something, so every soon as one sport season ended, I was trying out for the next sport. When that sport season ended, I was trying out for the next sport, literally. Like, that's, that was just me. But after a while, you know, I had to, after one of my basketball games, my foot was really swollen. Like, I couldn't put pressure on it. And, you know, I have problems sometimes when I walk now. But I couldn't put pressure on it. And, you know, we didn't want to take my shoe off. Well, I couldn't take my shoe off anyway because it hurt too bad. So, my mama took me to the hospital after my game. My coach had to carry me out the gym. And um, my mama had took me to the doctor. We went to LaBarner, and my doc, the doctor pretty much told me that I need to pick a different career field. I ain't gonna lie, I wanted to curse her out because of the way that she said it to me. And I'm like, how you gonna tell me I need to do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. But she was like, you're gonna have to pick a different thing to do. Like, you can't play sports. Like, because unless I wanted, they gave me the option to have a surgery or whatever, but there was a possibility with the surgery that I could never walk again. And I didn't want to take that chance. So it was just like, I got to put sports down. It is what it is. Um, but I feel like it was for the best, though. Next question. What's your favorite food? My favorite foods are popcorn and, and, and strawberry things. Like, I love strawberries, strawberry ice cream, um, things of that nature, like, when I'm on my cycle, I have to have strawberries and strawberry ice cream, like strawberry milkshakes, anything like that. Strawberries and popcorn. Those are my favorite foods. Next question. What is your preferred water bottle? Anybody that know me? No, I drink Fiji water. The best water on the freaking planet, period. All right, last question, y'all. Any tips for upcoming models? So people ask me questions about this a lot. Um, the main question that I get is, how do I start modeling or how do I get into modeling? So I would say the number one way to do it is find an agency in your area, um, audition for your agency, or if you don't have an agency in your area, or if you don't like the agencies in your area, or if you simply just can't afford um, to be a part of an agency at the moment, then find you a photographer and take professional pictures. You need headshot photos. That's step number one. You need headshot photos. Make sure you get headshot photos first and foremost before anything else. Get you some clean headshot photos. Um, go on Google and look up um, actors and models headshots. Those are examples of the kind of headshots that you need. Um find you a photographer that takes really good pictures and just get you some professional photos make you a business um modeling page on facebook or instagram really you could put it across all platforms because there's no telling how you could get discovered by brands and you know how you can gain any partnerships anything like that because social media is the biggest outlet and um social media will be your biggest chance so take these professional pictures, post them on social media. Like that's literally how I got out there. I wasn't always signed to an agency. I um I was just taking professional photos or people would reach out to me and be like, hey, can you model this for me? Can you do this for me? Can I get you for a photo shoot? Can I get you for this? Can I get you for that? Heck yeah, you most definitely can. That is how I started building my portfolio first Um, before I was even signed to an agency. Um. So that is definitely what I would say do. Start taking you professional photos and just put them out there. Post them on social media and everything like that. And maybe people will start reaching out to you, but you can also reach out to people as well. You can reach out to you can reach out to businesses and brands. Like don't be afraid to reach out to them either because you can really get a lot of deals and partnerships and um everything like that by reaching out to people as well. So you can, you know, get photo shoots by reaching out to photographers or just reaching out to people and, you know, putting yourself out there saying, hey, I'm an inspiring model or whatever. The little sunlight shining, you know. 
but you could just say i'm an ins i'm an aspiring model or whatever um send them your portfolio and maybe they'll give you a chance you know to be a part of a campaign or you just never know so you can put let me close this all right this is better so you can put yourself out there as well so don't be afraid to do that because that could definitely get you exposure they can get you um photo shoot deals and everything like that so don't be afraid to do that that's the end of this video guys thank you so much for watching this video if this was your first time watching a video of mine thank you so much for watching i hope that you like my content enough to like comment and subscribe if you were not new here then thank you for coming back again and watching another video um like I said in the last video, y'all, I need a name for y'all. I need a name for my supporters, for my subscribers. So I need y'all to get to thinking and put y'all thinking caps on and help me come up with a name for y'all. But that's the end of this video, y'all. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next freaking video.